Hello my friends, my name is Daniel, welcome back to the Crosslink channel. Today we talk about the Ender 3 V3 KE open source release by Creality that was released yesterday. What's inside? How can you use it? Is it even worth it? Let's go. So what exactly has Creality released with this open sourcing of the Ender 3 V3 KE Clipper? So they released the Clipper source code. Originally they have cloned this from the GitHub repository of Clipper and they have modified it to run on the Ender 3 V3 KE. But the firmware that's running on the screen that is running Clipper is not open source. So you cannot recompile that or make huge modifications to that, but more on that later. Alongside with the Clipper source code, they also released the configuration files that are used to run the printer. So you can change them. You can also change the macros and that's included. Now, if you screw up and change too much or you forget about how to revert some of the changes or you delete something then you can revert everything that you've changed by using the firmware recovery tool to the original state on top of that you get two additional packages that you can install the fluid interface or the main sale interface both are html browser interfaces everything that we talk about here is running on this little touch screen device that is essentially a nebula a board or a uh, you could also say a clipper pad um, that's directly attached to the printer originally there's just a creality web interface on this which is very limited in terms of the information that you can see for example if you want to see the flow rate and print acceleration and speeds that is not really shown there and with installing mainsail i was able now to see more in depth all the details that i'm interested in when printing with this printer and on top of that, um, for example, Mainsail has an integrated editor to change the printer configuration files. Also, what comes along in a, I think it's in a separate GitHub repository. And by the way, I'm linking both GitHub repository that are uh, mentioned here in this video down in the description of this video. So the description of the main board, the touch screen and the tool head PCP pinouts is also included. It's not really a detailed pinout. It's more describing what connector on the main board actually is used for, but it is not really mentioning all of the individual pins or uh, what they are used for. So if you're looking for that, that's probably something that Creality has yet to deliver. Then uh, there's a little guide that describes uh, how to get into the system, how to log in using SHH into the Linux operating system System that's running on the touch screen so they call it routing guide in fact it means you have to install the latest firmware on the printer that gives you another menu item in the settings and you have to agree that you're like basically doing all of that on your own terms on your own risk and then it displays you once you agree displays you the login information for ssh to go into the linux operating system on the touch screen now what can you actually do with this information what is possible now well, you can install Mainsail or Fluid and have a different interface uh, available through the browser. It doesn't change anything in the mobile app um, and it's really only available in your local network. So it's not available over the internet unless you have some way to log in into your own network. And you can use it to enter, uh, for example, you can change um, the configuration files or add some macros or change existing macros. As I said, you can also log in with SSH into the touchscreen operating system and you probably can change and copy new binaries over SSH onto this device. You can also use the USB port to do this uh, with a USB stick, uh, obviously. Theoretically, you can change everything in the operating system. And as I said, if you screw up, then you have a way to restore the original firmware. But there is a caveat and that means we have to talk about the downsides and what was actually not included in this open source release. So the operating system that's running on the touchscreen, that's running Clipper is super, super limited. So let's talk about what are the limitations. Uh, first of all, there is no package manager. And if you've ever used installed software on Linux, you know that having a package manager like apt or dpkg at least or ipkg uh, is kind of a must have to have a like comfortable way to install software and that's missing here. So there's no way to install software that's missing on this device using a package manager, which is unfortunate. Um, there's, for example, no bash. And if you have anything like an installation script, we'll come to that in a second, that requires bash, bash is not installed. So I was thinking, yeah, okay, let's install bash from the source code files of bash. So you can download from the GNU homepage source codes of bash and try to compile it. But there's no C compiler 
on this operating system. So if you have no C compiler, you cannot compile software. And that means you have to do it externally on another device and for the right target platform. In this case, it's an ARM platform and you have to compile it and then copy uh, all of the binaries over to this device to install something that's missing, like a C compiler or Bash or uh, maybe also a package manager. Um, I'm sure there's a way to figure this out, but it's, you see, this is not like a like an easy peasy thing. Um, then in terms of the camera support, I was like kind of hoping that if I install mainsail, I can also also use the camera now, um, for example, Logitech C920 or a Microsoft uh, HD 3000. So both are pretty cheap cameras. Unfortunately, none of them are supported, uh, even with this latest firmware. Um, the only camera that's currently working for me is the Creality Nebula camera that I have uh, gotten from AliExpress and that works and I have still to test out the AI features and um, failure detection and time-lapsing functions of that. So, But anything else is not yet supported and I think to get it supported probably uh, you have to patch Clipper to support it in, in some way. But currently that's obviously a little bit harder. Then the device itself, so the touchscreen device only has eight gigabyte of storage. That means you're like anyways limited with how much you can actually install here. And that's maybe also the reason why they have stripped down the operating system so much that it's really, uh, that's enough storage left to store some of the STL files um, that you print, which because those are also stored locally in this storage. Um, for example, I tried to install uh, Kiao to use it to install additional Clipper packages and uh, add-ons. And since Bash is missing and other stuff is missing, some dependencies, it's really not possible for me at the moment unless I really go very, very deep and uh, um, try to install off the missing dependencies, which which someone might probably have the time and the knowledge to do. Um, so it's currently not possible to use it, which is also uh, a little bit of a downside. So realistically, you have to be an expert and uh, yeah, probably get some package manager running on this to, to make this a lot more easier. So what's my conclusion? Well, um, it is, I, I think for me, it's appreciated that I can now run mainsail and have a little more control over the printer and uh, edit the configuration files if I need to. In a way, I'm happy, but if I would like to tinker a lot more and get more control, I, I probably might have to think about running a Raspberry Pi and control my printer from there which is a little bit of a uh, weird thing because then I could also just get the Ender 3 uh, V3 SE and upgrade that to Clipper and probably save some money. So maybe you're gonna think about that if you're really into tinkering with this printer. Otherwise, there's also no super hard reason to actually crack open this printer and change it so much because it is actually already a pretty good printer. So, But I wanted to give you all the details behind this and then you can make your own conclusions what you want to do. Uh, with that, I want to thank you for watching this video. And yeah, don't forget to like if you get value, subscribe to the channel and ask any questions that this may, might have raised. And uh, I'm, I'm willing to answer if I can. So post them down in the description uh, in the comment section of this video. And I'll see you next time on the channel. Have a good time. Until then. Bye bye.